Sierra Hills lies the Paramount Ranch. This national park is home to more than nature and wildlife. It's the location for the television series Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. The critically acclaimed program is entering its fifth season on network television and beginning its first year in national syndication. The hour-long Western family adventure is built around the events in the life of Dr. Michaela Quinn, affectionately known as Dr. Mike, played by film and television star Jane Seymour. Dr. Quinn is a refined woman who moves from highly civilized mid-19th century Boston to the rough frontier town of Colorado Springs to begin her own medical practice. Co-starring with Jane Seymour is Joe Lando, who portrays Byron Sully, a mountain loner who befriends Dr. Quinn and her three adopted children, played by Chad Allen, Jessica Bowman, and Sean Tooby. The fine supporting cast is headed by veterans Orson Bean and Barbara Babcock, and a whole slew of background actors make up the townsfolk of Colorado Springs. These are the faces in front of the cameras, but behind the scenes are at least 100 more belonging to some of the most talented and creative people in the industry, who obviously take great pride and pleasure in their work. All of the series is shot here on location, with many of the buildings being utilized for exterior and interior scenes. While there are advantages to working in such an environment as opposed to a back lot or soundstage, the conditions are not without hazards. Extreme cold or hot weather for one, and hot weather means park rangers are on rattlesnake duty. And there's a lot of dirt and dust everywhere. So much dust that a water truck is used to dampen the town's roads before shooting scene. Even nature sometimes has to be helped, like adding leaves to hide exposed power cables or adding trees for a better looking background. Such conditions are mere inconveniences, and the prevailing news on the Dr. Quinn set is one of family and fun. People enjoy working on the program, and credit Jane Seymour and creator and executive producer Beth Sullivan for setting the tone. Sullivan is proud to bring quality, issue-oriented family entertainment to television. The fact that it's set historically uh, removes those issues from being right in people's face, so that I think people get a different perspective and are able to hear things uh, probably a little more easily and see things uh, a little more easily from a distance. The producer's job is very much like a general contractor's job. It's to basically execute uh, the document, the plans that the architect gives you. And in this case, the architect is the writers. And uh, what a great writing staff Dr. Quinn has been blessed with over the five years that we've been on, um, led by Beth who is a wonderful creator, executive producer, and uh, her and I have been able to put together and assemble a wonderful cast and uh, uh, storylines that uh, continue to be innovative and um, educate as well as entertain. And I gotta give so much of that credit to her because uh, in doing so, it makes me look so much better as a producer because uh, you get a great script and you get great opportunities to really deliver a quality show. Most of the Dr. Quinn crew have been with the program since the first season. Writers and directors often change as it takes eight shooting days to complete each one hour episode. Often Jane Seymour's husband, James Keach, is calling the shots as he did in the fourth season ender involving the birth of Dr. Quinn's baby. Keats was perhaps best suited to direct this particular episode as he and Seymour had recently become the proud parents of twins. The children visit the ranch often, another sign of the family atmosphere on the set. A weekly production meeting is held to discuss upcoming episodes. At a cost of $1.3 million per episode, nothing is left to chance. This is the only pregnancy dress James, that I have double. Not particularly. Okay. Then I'll tell you what. We don't, as long as those are folded up, okay, yeah. we'll never see them unfolded mm -hmm. because Emma never unfolds more than one. Jane comes in and holds one up to herself at the mirror. So we can have this one as the full and as the taken in. While pre-production plans are being finalized on a future episode, back on the set, Terrence O'Hara is directing the complex fifth season opener titled Runaway Train. It's a great education for me just simply because I have the opportunity to delve into what was real back then and what wasn't because they're very exact. Okay, lock it up and roll sound. Bye. That's the cue for sound mixer Claude Riggins. I tried to get it as good as possible. Uh, since this show takes place in the 1800s, it has to be without all of automobiles and 
airplanes and all modern sounds. And we get about 85 to 90 percent of it clean of those noises. Right? We wait for planes as long as we can. Hey, come here. Come here, Reggie. Oh, you got to come right now, otherwise we won't get you. Because these fellows are rolling. Now, this is my boom man, Reggie Dunn. Hey, Reggie. Uh, yeah, how you doing? <laughs> okay. But you going to leave, but I say something. We gotta go to work. You gotta go to work? Okay, yeah, go to work. Be well trained. Okay. <laughs> the unique look to Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman is largely due to the work of Director of Photography, Roland Ozzie Smith. There should have been little doubt Ozzie would be working on a Western. His father worked on High Chaparral and Bonanza. Smith has nothing but praise for the Dr. Quinn team. That's a first class operation, period, from the ground up, from the grips, the electricians, the camera, everybody on this show, and actors, producers, everybody. It's just been the best experience I've ever had in the motion picture business, period. What would a Western be without horses? The care and positioning of the animals are the responsibility of head wrangler Philip Smith. Make sure, you know, when they're bringing in cameras and lighting that they don't run into a horse and make sure the horses don't back into them. Uh, and really watch like Jane Seymour and when, all the actors. Teach them how to ride, all that kind of thing. All right, now I understand Jane is an expert. She uh, is. Equestrian. Yeah, she, she kind of scared me at first. She says, I don't ride much and everything. So, well, you better take riding lessons. She rides better than I do, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, she's great. When he's not busy with horses, you may even find Phil wrangling chickens at the homestead. Meanwhile, at the depot, the crew is preparing for a very complicated scene leading to the train wreck. On the roof of the train, technicians rock the passenger car while others carry tree branches to further create the illusion of movement. Add screams, a little smoke, and the shot looks something like this. Tim Johnson and editor Andy Bueller take us through the logistics of coordinating the incredible climactic train wreck scene, which involves the use of miniatures, stock footage, and scenes shot on set, including some in which Joe Lando performs his own stunts. Our footage. This is all miniature in here. Interior. Miniature. Fill in the miniature. way up it'll really give it the feel of uh, hopefully an actual train wreck. that's right the look of the wreckage after the train derailment is also a crucial element in the believability of the episode I go out and get all the chairs all the seats things that would have been in the car luggage barrels you know like on the baggage car and it's my job to make it look like it was thrown from the train uh, it took some weeks to have them put together brought down here set up we then move them around, as you can see, try to simulate the wreck, again, based on research. Uh, it's all, uh, you know, it, it's really uh, an academic process in many ways. When we return, we'll meet the cast of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, and later, an inside look at the life of an extra. Television miniseries, says she made the move to a weekly program because the role somewhat paralleled her own life. When I first read the script, um, and I was offered this role, there were such incredible similarities between the character and some of my backstory in real life um, that it really attracted me. It was really uncanny. I mean, I'm one of three girls. There are no boys in my family. My father was a doctor. I grew up watching him perform surgery. And, of course, you know, I took the trek out to the Wild West. <laughs> I came out here from England. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of things were very similar. Um, and I did end up, you know, having a stepchild and dealing with all of that and then having my own children. So um, I felt a, a great sort of kinship to the material. And also my father was a great lover of uh, medical history. So when I grew up, I was always involved with medical history. So it was perfect. 
Former soap opera heartthrob Joe Lando has grown as an actor, and his character Sully has also evolved. My character has been left um, widowed. His wife and baby die in childbirth. And so he goes out on his own to try to find himself again spiritually. You know, he's lost. And he falls into uh, the Cheyenne culture, and they basically adopt him and um, kind of show him a spiritual path to reorganize his life and start again. And what Sully represents with his, with his wolf and with the Cheyenne is, uh, to me, and the way I found it is that he's a character who, like the wolf and the Old West, is dying out. You know, he's a mountain man, he's a dying breed. 22-year-old Chad Allen has been acting for 17 years. He portrays the eldest of Dr. Quinn's three adopted children, Matthew. I think Matthew's probably changed more than any other character on the show. Uh, when it started, he was kind of a young teenage character with a lot of angst. And, and uh, he, was, he was busy taking care of his little brother and sister, like a father figure kind of thing, and, and had a lot of resentment for Dr. Mike when she first came in and said, I'll, I'm going to to look after you guys and be like your mother and Matthew's like I don't want to hear about it you're not my mother I really don't want anything to do with you I can take care of them just fine and um, the truth is as they got to know each other they really Dr. Mike and Matthew had formed a really great bond and he learned to relax and understand that she was going to take care of his little brother and sister and that and that he, he could go about his life and try and figure out what it was that he wanted to do. 15-year-old Jessica Bowman from the Bay Area city of Walnut Creek joined the cast in January 1995, taking over the role of Colleen. She's just really sweet and caring and giving and, like, doesn't ask to receive as much. She just loves to give. Very into her family. In fact, I bet if she lived in Walnut Creek, she would visit home every weekend, just like I do. While they learn lines and hit their marks, Jessica and 13-year-old Sean Tuvey learn the three R's and hit the books in a makeshift schoolroom. Some people like get to sit down and drink their coffee. Sean and I are rushed down to the schoolroom for usually segments of 20 minutes at a time. And I know it seems like you can't learn anything, but you do. Because 20 minutes is like half a page for all the students out there, like a half a page of math or a half a page of history. So you really do get it done. I'm doing 9th and 10th grade work. And is that, it sounds like it may be a little more yeah, advanced than what you would normally be doing. It's about a couple years advanced. Wow, that's great. Tell me about working on this show. It's a lot of fun. It's a great cast and crew. It's just like a big family. Another member of that big family is actor Orson Bean. Basically, uh, I play the, the crusty old storekeeper, kind of a dirty old man with a heart of gold plate. And uh, I started off a lot meaner than I am now, and I'm just, uh, you know, uh, basically, I'm still cantankerous, but uh, I think the people like me. And I kind of like myself. Janelle Allen portrays Grace, a woman of color who owns the cafe and is married to the town's blacksmith, Robert E., played by Henry G. Sanders. I feel very good to be a part of a, of a program where I know that the whole family can watch. And also, some people say our show is quote-unquote politically correct. However, I say that our show is historically correct. Actor Jeffrey Lower previously worked for creator Beth Sullivan in The Trials of Rosie O'Neill. Now he portrays the Reverend Timothy Johnson. The name may sound familiar. Remember, Timothy Johnson produces Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Jeffrey enjoys working at such a great location. It's, it's so beautiful. It's just so refreshing to come out here and be, and not have to worry about traffic the whole time you're here, not have to worry about anything while you're here. It, it's a national park, um, so it is pretty well maintained. And um, it's, it's a great place to spend the day and sometimes the night. <laughs> <laughs> When we return, we'll move the background to the foreground, an inside look at life as a Dr. Quinn Extra. Create the atmosphere on the set of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, begin their work. Often referred to as extras or atmosphere, background artists are essential in making a scene more realistic. You may not know their names, but you'll see their faces many times during Dr. Quinn episodes. Second assistant director, Zia Yampietro, coordinates the extras. Where did you come from? You came from the bar? Okay, you're on number one. You walk past the bar this way to your position that you came to number two from. During the day, we don't do a thing except uh, 
wait around to be called. So in the meantime, we do a lot of phone calling, reading a lot of books, and just generally staying out of the way of the principals until we are called. Uh, this is just like a family. The whole, everybody, the crew, the cast, they're all extremely wonderful people. And uh, of course, I have to admit that the uh, catering truck is one of the best in in uh, the business, I would say, because they do service some tremendous food. The program's most senior background artist is Carmen Ashby, who offers this advice on being an extra. Background is background, and you don't want to make yourself any more important than it, you're supposed to be. And never look at the camera. During our visit to the set, I was fortunate to learn firsthand what it's like to be a Dr. Quinn extra. First stop, the wardrobe trailer, and help from costumer Jimmy George. All right, Brian. What size waist are we? Uh, 34. Be honest. 34. An undershirt to put under that shirt. Okay. Says we want you to, to be a working man. Now, this is like a pair of canvas suspenders, see? Okay. Now, you have a dressing room. You've got boots, and when let's see. Let's give you. Do you know what size hat you are, Brian? No, I really don't. Oh, you're too easy. You're too easy. Is that good? Perfect well, fit, first time. Absolutely. Please. Now, what we need for you to do is to go over and get dressed. Okay. And then come back to me and let me look at you, and we'll All age right. you down a little. Okay, dirty you down. Jimmy directed me to a trailer where I would change into my costume, which took longer than expected thanks to a surprise interruption. I heard Brian Adams is trying to take over my trailer. Hello. How is he doing in there? Hey, how are you doing? Or can be. A real pleasure meeting you. A little privacy, please. Yeah, nobody wants to see him naked. <laughs> Fully clothed, the transformation continued while makeup artist Toby Lamb worked his magic. <laughs> these, are big, these are big pieces, huh? They're great, though. They really, they really bring out the, the mood of the show, you know? They bring out that feel of, right. of being a pioneer, you know? You know, I think I, I had these in high school. <laughs> what is this stuff you're putting this actually is uh, dirt. <laughs> is it real dirt? Clean dirt. Clean <laughs> dirt, okay. I began to really feel like a resident of Colorado Springs as I strolled into town. Before my big scene, Jimmy dirtied me down some more so I'd look like a hard-working man. Now I know the meaning of it's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. Then it was time for scene nine of episode 501, a scene featuring Chad Allen, Orson Bean, Janelle Allen, Henry Sanders, and if you look closely and don't blink, me. After a couple of rehearsals and camera blocking, the scene is filmed several times from different angles. That ain't the point. Well, it's terrible. Seems like nearly every day some string is taken off without paying for the meat. Some more of my horseshoes and taken left me from the liver. Seems like it. Don't feel safe anyway. Man, that's cut. When it's all put together, it looks something like this. Floor. Post this for me. Rare was offering a reward for information about a gang that's been robbing the train. Oh, hang the train. What are you going to do about my window? Is it missing? No. But that ain't the point. Well, it's terrible. Seems like nearly every day some stranger's taken off without paying for his meal. And some more of my horseshoes were taken last night from the liver. Seems like you don't feel safe anyway. I felt pretty good about my performance, having done what every good background artist should. I hit my marks and stayed inconspicuous. As for the reviews... I'm enjoying your work today. You really look like one of well, our bums. You. I'll keep my day job, but it was fun being an extra for a day and have a greater appreciation for the hours of waiting for mere seconds of screen time, which make the life of a background artist. We hope you enjoyed our behind-the-scenes look at the making of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. My thanks to the cast and crew for making me feel like one of the family. Now you and your family will be able to enjoy Dr. Quinn more often right here on this station. Away from home, it's so, and this really becomes my home to a great degree, it's wonderful to know that there's a, a family spirit here. And that